A child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. What is an example of this that you've seen or experienced first and I used to be into amateur radio after a short stint in the army cadets. There was one guy in the East Midlands, UK, who was one of the adult instructors. He was always telling us about amateur radio and would hand out old slash cheaper pieces of tech he tried out and wasn't keeping. Anyway, he was a little weird, overly friendly, with adults, never had any bad vibes around the kids, and obviously had some social anxiety which he was compensating for. Personally I suspect he was on the autistic spectrum, but who knows. After I left the cadets and went to uni, I stayed in touch on Facebook. We were in the same Facebook group for amateur radio hobbyists. He always liked to do things by the book and instilled in us the importance of being responsible and socially conscious with our radio use. He was the same on Facebook, reminding people that Mrs. McGinn's on her 10 hands that wouldn't know about transmission power and squelch, etc. He mentioned in parling to a new member the importance of only using the public unlicensed channels, kind of like CB radio in the US, on the correct, very low, power setting of half a watt. He mentioned it was because Mrs. Miggins trying to reach her kid in the next street wouldn't understand the idea that she could hear you but couldn't reach you to ask you to be quiet a minute. He was correct here and it's also a criminal offense to transmit at higher power on these frequencies even though it's not enforced. Anyway, this got someone's back up and he was kicked from the group for preaching. After unsuccessfully asking to be let back in, he set up a larger antenna in his back garden, set up a super fancy aerial atop it with a 30 watt transmission system. This is really quite powerful. He now turns this on for several hours a day on whatever channels the radio club slash group are using to teach them the importance of good etiquette. This means that nobody can use certain frequencies for hours at a time, as it just sounds like someone is having a one-way conversation on air. He could probably get arrested, but that doesn't seem to bother him at all. What an utterly bizarre reason to be kicked from the group. I once attended a birthday party with a bouncy castle. The birthday kid and their friends kicked the younger sibling and his friend out, so they unplugged it and watched everyone's dismay as it deflated. Way to go, Mason. Badder moves for a 12 year old. Good lord, if Mason is 12, what kind of older siblings slash teenagers are renting a birthday bouncy castle? Is that the cool thing these days with the local youths? I worked in an office for a Fortune 500. One of our longtime team members, G, worked as a level 2 employee for quite a while. She was good enough to be a level 3 or level 4 employee, but never took the offer because she was a single mom, relied on public transportation, etc. Her friend, P, started at the same time she did and was a level 3, working up to a level 4. P and G were all good until P discovered that G made more than P because she was constantly getting merit raises and performance bonuses. One day, G made an honest mistake, our client just switched to a different protocol for billing and she accidentally did it the old way. It was a no harm, no foul situation, but P went to the level 4 employees and senior management and suggested that G be fired. They all went to ours who said that, while there was no valid reason to fire her, they could move her to a chistia team that would basically guarantee her failure. G realized what was happening and secured another job. We were going to be off for 4 days for Christmas and G quit Thursday by leaving an after hours voice email. G knew that the message wouldn't be received until Monday morning, so she sent out an email to the entire building, time to be sent at 11.59 Christmas Eve. The email detailed how P was having an affair with her bill while her husband was deployed, how one senior manager took this job because he was fired for embezzlement and lost his CPA license, and how one of our male level 3 employees requested a transfer because our married department manager was sexually harrowing him. We got in at 8 hours and it got in at 9. It was a chishow Monday morning. Quite a few people quit that day, and to think, it all could have been avoided. Edit 1, thanks for the award. Edit 2, I've run into G and P since then. G is thriving. She got a stern phone call from the company and they tried to withhold her last paycheck, but that was it. P is, well, a little more humble now.
she was going through some serious chiz at the time, and while that doesn't excuse any of the chiz that she did, I think the letter was a wake up call that she needed to fix her life. Edit 3, level 3 employee is doing well. He quit a year after for a better opportunity. Edit 4, I'm not going to say who it is, but it is not Procter and Gamble. The equivalent of walking away from an explosion you lit yourself. I work with kids who have mental health issues. Many of them have attempted suicide, ran away, self-harm, or have an addiction of some kind by their mid-teens. They always have some kind of traumatic family life that's pushed them to that problem. One thing we see again and again is the poor kid who comes in after the parent slash guardian has belittled them and told them what a piece of garbage they are for years. Eventually the kid starts acting out, which the adult uses as proof that he slash she was right all along about the kid being an awful piece of chiz. One kid I worked with was in and out of treatment programs for a couple of years and had exactly this kind of parents. Father was always on the road driving a truck and checked out when he was at home. Mom was personality disordered and extremely emotionally and verbally abusive. One day, while his father was on the road, this boy murdered his mother by bludgeoning her to death with a hammer while she slept in. Then he kept her body in the house for a few days abusing the corpse before stuffing her remains into the trash can and leaving them on the curbside for pickup. Now I haven't seen anything that bad, but an ex of mine used to volunteer at a youth development center in the middle of a fairly bad city. I'd go there to pick her up to hang out, since she didn't have a vehicle yet, and it duck with me only seeing the preteens with 8-9 to nine month bellies. It absolutely devastated her having to work with these children every day to the point she had to get therapy and distance herself. She finally got out of working there, and last time we talked she had found a decent job a few states north doing the same work, but in a much better city, so her youngest pregnancy there is 17, not 11. This could be applied to my, soon to be ex, husband. He has mommy issues. He has daddy issues. He has sibling issues. Basically, his parents divorced when he was in grade school and no one really ever parented him from that point forward. His dad left. His mom, in my opinion, has no sense of accountability and can never be wrong about anything, so not exactly a great role model. She restarted her career after the divorce and left him in the dust. My husband never really healed from the aftermath of his parents' divorce. I can understand, my own parents' divorce negatively affects me to this day in some ways. Though my parents are the polar opposite of his. They are extremely involved and giving. I think the more my parents involved themselves in our lives the more he realized what a parent was supposed to look like. When our baby was born, and my parents worked to be helpful and bond with him, I think it almost showed a giant magnifying glad on the abandonment issues he had buried and run from his whole life. He cracked this year. Ran away with someone. Threw me and my loving family away, but, briefly, got the attention he was yearning for from both his chisty absentee parents in his time of crisis. That didn't last too long. He burnt our marriage and the life we had built over 10 plus years to the ground. He felt so sad and wanted me to feel as badly as he did. Though, any warmth he enjoyed from doing so quickly dissipated. He regrets everything. Update, we have been separated for months, but within the past 6 weeks has been trying to open the door. I've been patient with him and encouraging while he tries to find the right specialists. He called me tonight to tell me he's back with her. So, I guess he doesn't really regret anything. I need to redact that last sentence world well, want to be inaccurate. And just FYI, I was still in denial about having to get a divorce. It's stupid but I wanted to work through some of this, even if we cold and stay married through therapy. Hold me accountable, Reddit, I'm 100% done. I can relate to him a little. I'm 32 years old and my baby is 7 months old. I thought I was over my abandonment issues for years now, but having my baby has opened a lot of old wounds and I've struggled a lot with it. It's hard to understand. If I love my baby so much, why didn't my parents love me like that? Anyway, I'm so sorry that you were the victim of his destruction while he tried to deal with the unhealed wounds. Saw this happen with my lit brother. He has autism, and even though he was diagnosed around the age of 8 a lot of people didn't know how to deal with him, or didn't want to take the effort to learn how to deal with him. 
This includes teachers, other children's parents and even one of our grandmothers. What made it even worse is that I was a child prodigy who would get nothing but amazing grades and started getting into art at a very young age and being really good at it. I got all the praise had he basically got nothing. My parents didn't do this on purpose. I would steal the spotlight. So he just started getting in trouble just so he would get any attention. He started fires, vandalized stuff and even from a young age he would go to the main road to throw rocks at cars and such. If he didn't get caught he would tell my parents what he did himself. There's actually a video of him at my birthday where he told our mom he wanted to show her something only to flip over a very large container of laundry detergent when she arrived with the camera. He's 25 now and thankfully he has a really nice girlfriend that actually helps him get over the whole negative attention is also attention thing. I was in basically the same situation, except the constant expectations from my parents were a problem for me. I ended up dealing with depression, but I still always tried to behave like a responsible adult and care for and believe in my autistic little brother in a way that my parents never quite did for me. He ended up having really good grades and a successful job and a remarkable air of competency that I never truly had, and by the time he graduated high school he was the responsible one with a solid future, and I was the screw up. He once told me that, even if I was a bit useless, I was more of a father to him than our actual dad ever was, and I couldn't be more proud of him. My uncle. He was always the black sheep of the family, but turned out he had been carefully planning his future from the start. He got a full ride to his dream college, got a really well paying job, got married and now has a child who is a few months old. My grandparents, his parents, always thought he was a disappointment as he was their only son. He knew this, and they verbally abused him for a while about how he never lived up to their expectations. Turns out, his parents, and all four of his sisters ran Thames loves into quite a bit of debt, and he only found out as he was nearly done with college. They came to my uncle for help, after he found employment and he basically gave my whole family the finger, and said for them to help themselves. I'm literally the only one of any of my cousins or siblings who bothered contacting him years after this whole ordeal. At the time I was too young to understand what the duck was happening let alone travel by myself. So I contact him via Facebook Messenger, and his wife is a lovely woman. His daughter is so cute and gorgeous, and he is still the same strong, kind-hearted man that I remember. My parents know I'm on contact with him, and they just don't care. I'll be staying over at their house for a little while next week, and I'm so glad I was able to meet my little cousin. Edit, I didn't expect this to blow up. Well, I know some of you guys are saying this doesn't exactly comply or fit the quote, but it was the best story slash experience I had that fit the quote, so I thought there wouldn't be much harm in sharing it. Anyway, feel free to ask questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Edit 2, thank you kind stranger for the reddit gold. I'll be sure to pay it forward. I feel like this is one of the few times the kid lighting something on fire to feel the warmth instance turns out good. I guess I would maybe count to this. I cut my relatives out of my life when I was 19. They had spent my life tormenting me and treating me like dirt. With me gone, there's my aunt, my uncle, my grandmother, and my dad. My dad being the youngest at 58 years old now. No younger generation to take care of them. My aunt would be prepared for that, but my dad and my grandmother were banking all their hopes on me caring for them in their old age. So much so they would make fun of me for how incapable I was of domestic tasks. For example I didn't learn how to use a washing machine until I googled it at 19. But when I asked them to show me, they always made excuses. Your school should be teaching you that. You should know how to do that. Figure it out. I'll show you some other time. They never would show me though. They liked having evidence of what a horrible, incompetent, and lazy person they saw me as. They also didn't want me to be able to live independently because that would make it easier for me to move out, which would mean I wouldn't be at their immediate use. I also lied and said that I was required to live on campus for the first year. When I went to university, I wasn't planning to cut contact yet, but I was desperate for a taste of independence. My aunt gave me my birthday money early so that I could afford the deposit. 
I felt awful, because my aunt was actually the only one who had ever stood up for new, but keeping in contact with her would have been too complicated, and I'm certain she would have put some pressure on me to mend things with the others. Not even a month after I moved into my student accommodation, I got into an argument with my dad and finally stood up for myself. I cut contact, and with that I was expecting to become homeless once finished my first year and my lease finished. I was too mentally ill to complete my studies and hold down a job at the same time. As luck would have it, everything turned out fine. A lot of bumps in the road, but I graduated, didn't end up homeless, and I'm now working in the healthcare system. I don't exactly regret cutting contact, but I'll admit I should have done some research on my options for homelessness instead of hoping for the best. I nearly destroyed my life. Doesn't sound like a burned village to me. It sounds like you lit your own candle and found a good way. Kid went to school. He was in special behavioral class and then was put into our clan in 4th grade. My teacher was hard on him. One day, the kid had a tantrum and threw a chair. He was sent back to the special class, which probably destroyed him. He continued on and in high school, was one of the freaks. Always wore a trench coat, in Texas, mind you, was into nerdy things. I talked to him sometimes, but wouldn't really call him a friend, more just nice to him. He would be reading a rad and book, and we chat about that being my uncle got me into RPGs. In 11th grade, school went into lockdown for some unknown reason. Found out he committed suicide in one of the school bathrooms. Had he wrote letters to faculty and friends prior to doing it. My cousin's son had a similar issue in the first grade. He and his little brother were not allowed many toys when in acre when his parents were working. About 5 years agile they moved in with me and my parents, on the other side of the country. We work to help correct a lot of lost time socializing, and it is working. Their parents got decent jobs, and seemed to do their best, but me and my parents were always helping them out watching the boys, and trying to help them socialize and learn to be self-actualized. The older one went through kindergarten with few issues, aside from the school counselor wanting to medicate him, which my cousin, with a nursing degree, refused to do. In the first grade, he got along well with the other students, but his teacher would ignore his questions, belittle him in front of other students, and would demand that he do things the other students didn't have to do. She would complain to the administration that he was stupid, use those exact words, and when he would report that kids were picking on him, he was ignored. About three weeks before the end of school, he got so pissed at the teacher that he picked up a desk and threw it at the teacher and nearly hit her. He wasn't expelled, but he was pulled from school. He got a position the next year at the alternative school and excelled. However, his first grade teacher started complaining that alternative school isn't for grade school, but middle and high school, so much so, the school board cut the program after his second grade year. Now he is home shoaled, and they are still trying to figure how best to sue the district. I hope it doesn't cause too many issues in the long term with him, but he needs structure, and homeschooling just caused him to learn to lie, so he just can play games all day. I did this to my last job as a rehab tech in a nursing home. I was treated poorly after a couple of months. My workload was literally doubled, and I was never listened to about my concerns. I begged them to hire a second tech, even part time, just so I can breathe and have my mental state not be ruined. They always told me no and then piled on more work. Got mad at me when patients weren't complying, ran me around like a dog for hours, cut my lunch hour for no reason, and refused to give me any sort of pay raise when minimum wage went up. I was at my wits end and everyone but my manager and the therapists could see it. I also experienced a privacy violation that I wish I reported to ours. I was basically forced to tell my manager why I needed to take a day off and for what the medical procedure I was getting was for. Another instance I was told I was clearly gaining weight by one of the therapists and my manager and then they laughed about it. I was so pissed off that I put in my two weeks but I could barely make it past two more days. After one god awful busy morning, I packed up my stuff during my break, clocked out, and went home. I sent a text to my manager saying I won't be coming back, and I blocked her. I felt bad doing it, but I had nurses and aides telling me to quit BC they saw how miserable I was. 
About a week or so later they went into lockdown BC of COVID. You didn't burn it down. You left for your own mental health. You did the right thing. My brother, my family wasn't loving. I coped it with my venturing out and exploring on my own. I would leaving early each day and explore nature, only coming home for food. My brother coped with the lack of love with sex, drugs, fighting, parties, and theft. He had a super distorted view of needing love and he really acted like if he wasn't getting love, then the world deserved to burn. He went into prison in his jeans. He got out in his 20s, tried to be good for a year, but couldn't find his concept of love, so he started burning the village again, went back in. Got out years later, tried to go clean, and this time found love. But he pushed himself too hard to be lovable, he developed a super personality built on meth. He did drugs to keep up, lost his love, and started to burn the village down again. The last time, the local sheriffs ended the cycle, he wasn't going back in. During the road chase, they filled his windshield with bullets and he veered off a cliff and died in the dirt. It was the headline of the local news. I think I may forever compare my life to my brothers. How could we be so different? We had the same parents and endured very similar pains. But I didn't choose to burn down the village. I chose to distance myself and survive. He went nuclear. The village didn't have a chance. I'm sorry that happened to you both. I'm a behavioral interventionist at a middle school. My job is technically to pull disruptive students out of class, get them redirected, then back into their classroom. Most of my job is actually a sounding board and an understanding ear to kids who struggle. My entire job is a example of that quote. The neglect and abuse of some of those kids will break your heart. So much respect for this role. All the very best with it. I'm burning down my community right now. That is, my neighbors are ducking with me, trying to weaponize the bylaws of our hoa to construct a spiteful road on my property for their driveway. Fire safety they call it. $25,000 and unnecessary legal expenses, I call it. So I'll let my hoa know that, if they allow this, don't stand up forcefully for me in court, then I will use that same power to demand a 60 foot road down the entire hoa, literally forcing neighbors I don't know to move their homes. I'm being treated poorly, feel unwelcome in my new village, so I'm enforcing my rights and burning down the neighborhood. It will cost 25 landowners $1,000,000 to make up for ducking with me, some may literally lose their homes, and afterwards their property values will be much lower. But I told them what would happen if they did not support me, gave them a chance. How would that work exactly? How could you enforce, or they enforce a new road? That's crazy. I don't understand how any of that works. I went to school with a kid who seemed a little disturbed. Maybe it's just my bias, but he definitely seemed like the school shooter type. Well, no one liked this kid and constantly picked on him. Once in some random clan in 7th grade I asked him if he wanted to be my partner for some dumb little aim it. We chatted in class for the rest of the year. Toward the end of high school he told me I kept him from some batches by being his best friend. I literally only talked to him in class for a few months, and by that point, hadn't talked to him in years. Embrace everyone folks. You never know whether it might change someone's life. It takes many acts of hatred to break a child's spirit. With one act of kindness, you saved it. Thanks man. You did good. Well, Hitler wasn't a popular boy for sure. Same with Sosescu, friendless his entire life. Stalin was beaten by his father. And it goes on and on. Well, Hitler wasn't a popular boy for sure this displeased his father, who punished him severely. Throw away because f these guys. I worked at a very famous family oriented company for almost 15 years. I was damn good at my job, but refused to brown nose or play dirty office politics, so I stayed pretty much in my original spot for a long time. Because of this, I became a pretty regularly used advice platform for other employees on how to handle workplace issues, and because I valued my integrity, I never reported red flags to management, but always encouraged the person to do so on their own behalf. Eventually a few key people remembered how I helped them and circumvented the usual cronyism to bring me into their teams for big name projects. It was a nice change and I appreciated the chance to stretch. 
Then, I started getting systematically bullied and harried by the in crowd, who had decided I was unworthy of being in their presence. I ended up going to therapy about it to help develop tools to deflect while desperately looking for a way out. Eventually, I got another job and handed a sort of manifesto two hours when I turned in my 30 days notice. Racism, sexual harrowment, alt, blatant favoritism, theft. All with dates, names, and supporting evidence. Basically an hour nightmare because they cold and control what I did when I left, including going to the press. My departure gave them 30 days to ask me questions, interview me, whatever. But it never came. Thing is, I also sent that novel off to the EOC. They opened an investigation with the company and the moment they did, all hell broke loose. See, the people who were too afraid to come forward before now had an out, they weren't snitching, they were complying with an investigation per company policy. So suddenly, scores of people were testifying to ours about the horrific things they had been subject to. Some people were fired, others demoted, a few got off scot-free, but I sleep like a baby now. Update slash edit, just to clarify, I went to each and every person whose story I included in my little ECB to make sure they were comfortable and understood what might follow. Most agreed, some did not, and I excluded them entirely from my manifesto. My only regret is that there were people whose struggles even I didn't know about, and I was unable to amplify their voices. Thank you all for your support, speak out, speak up, speak together. The voices of many are harder to silence than the voice of one. You are amazing, and thank you for speaking your truth. This would have been so satisfying. Any school shooting tragedy. This. More often than not a child who has the intention to slash or to shoot up a school is one who has been marginalized and bullied by their peers. They've maybe tried to talk and not been taken seriously. Maybe their relationships with parental fijias is not one that encourages talks or expression of feeling. It all bottles up. When you're ignored, picked upon, not listened to by people in a position of responsibility. That shiz is toxic as duck and results in explosivity and the you'll listen to me now mentality that can be found in a lot of school shooters. Does anyone know the actual story of King Shaka Zulu? He was literally that guy. Shaka was born as an illegitimate son of a Zulu and was thus rejected by the Zulu settlements. He spent his childhood growing up in his mother's settlements and was then lent an army which he used to take over the Zulu tribe. Q one of the greatest but most intense African warriors and monarchs of all time. Not only does Shaka Zulu burn the whole village but also my capital by turn 50. I knew a girl a few years back who I think is a decent example of this. She was diagnosed with AD back in primary school and was shunned by her whole family because of it. As a result she had low self esteem and slowly grew a profound hatred for people which resulted in everyone at school hating her and as a result her hatred grew more. After her 17th birthday she ran away but before she did she had spent about 5 years gathering dirt on everyone who wronged her. She released it all which resulted in her parents splitting and a bunch of other kids being expelled or getting into chis with their parents and if memory serves me correctly one kid even got disowned because of what everyone found out about him. She ended up running up to a family friends of mine and is still working on rebuilding her life. It's a shame because she is one of the nicest people I know and is very honest person. Everyone just treated her like crap so she burned it all. Talk about going in style. I go a police call to go by a school. I arrived and I see a teacher holding a small kid back and the other kid who looked like he just got hit by a bus. His arm looked backwards. His face was bloodied. He had hair ripped out. Was on the floor as paramedics took him to the abum lamps. I arrested the kid. While I had to question him he said and I quote I want to be noticed it haunted me as I sent out a report to do a background check on the parents. Turns out the kid was being neglected and at school teachers reported that others would push past him and shove him and not even notice him. He was smiling as he then said people finally looked at me, it's been so long since that I felt horrible as I parred the case to a different person as I cold and handle it I'm not sure it applies here but that's the first thing that same to mind when I saw this. Don't get me wrong, but kids are animals. They act and behave on a very primal level. So if they shove, push and bully someone, eventually that kid might snap and retaliate, 
just to protect themselves. Like bees who know they will die if they sting an attacker, but dying is better than living like this. So always make sure to teach your kids how to behave and not to push others beyond their breaking points. Deleted. I feel this in my bones. I have a similar story. I was slash am a professional musician and had to leave the largest band I was in because of the deterioration of the lead singer. Lost his mind at some point and has become an egomaniac delusional that destroys just about everything he touches, all while making everyone resent him. Now has the nerve to play the victim at every opportunity. It's something else to see first and from your clues, I also have an idea of who you might be, and if I'm right, I may be way, way wrong. Big fan of yours. One of my best friends in high school had a few really crappy boyfriends. She is very bright, excelled on the debate team, and is really attractive, but her mom was a serious alcoholic, and was always getting into new relationships, and then breaking up, which I think part some attachment issues onto my friend. When we were seniors, she was talking about all the losers she'd dated, been mistreated by, and how none of them were going anywhere in life. She said something to the effect of, I'd love to be there when they inevitably get locked up for drugs or domestic abuse, or both. She got a law degree, moved back to our town, and is now the county prosecutor. Hot damn. I'm half laughing, and half in awe. I can't help but think this would make an excellent premise for a TV series. I don't know if it 100% fits, but I will share anyway. There's this one kid I went to high school with. He was incredibly sheltered by his parents to the point where he couldn't even leave his driveway or even watch most shows on the Disney Channel. All of a sudden his parents have a change of heart and give him a lot more freedom. Well he gets involved with the wrong people online and ends up a neo-Nazi. Let this be a lesson in why you shouldn't shelter your kids. Well that escalated quickly. Any number of multiple murderers, arsonists, suicide bombers, etc. As a society we are just in love with abandonment, so we abandon our most vulnerable every chance we get. Instead of providing an environment in which everyone can flourish, we focus on degrading and reducing each other, so that we can lie to ourselves that we are the best, because we're least chizgy. It doesn't stop us from being chizgy, or from turning the world to chiz. I'm not saying that this doesn't happen in other countries, of course it does. Do you think that the very strong me first and every one for themselves mentalities in the US amplify this? In December I rage quit my job. My boss was losing her ducking mind. I worked in a small office of about 8 to 9 people. In my time there I saw 11 people come and go from various positions. One day when the boss and her sister, the vice bitch, were out, us employees all had a discussion about how bad the work environment was getting. Micromanaging, no autonomy or flexibility, etc etc. Really not a good place to be in general. We pinned it down to being mostly due to the behavior of the vice bitch. One employee agreed to take one for the team and discuss it with the head bitch. However, the head bitch completely twisted everything that was said and took it as that employee telling on everyone else for having this conversation. She had individual meetings with each one of us. She blasted us about what was said and she was insistent on finding out who started it. She didn't buy it when we basically all said it was just a fluid discussion that was had, not some planned meeting called by one person. After the individual meetings, we had a meeting with all of us where she told us it was absolutely unacceptable that we had this bitch session, and if we didn't like it that she would accept our resignations immediately. She expected loyalty, and if we weren't loyal, we weren't welcome. We tried to reason with her in the meeting, telling her it was just some general concerns we had, and we agreed one person would present them to her, but she was having none of it. No solution for the problems that were making all of her employees upset. It was all about her and her sister. No concern for her indentured servants, as we called ourselves. I should have quit then and there when she said that she'd accept our resignations, but I didn't. I did start looking for jobs though. I had an interview one day and I texted in sick. I had quietly let one of my coworkers, who I thought I could trust, know about the interview. When I texted my boss I got the response good luck at your interview. I expect loyalty, not silly game so. I went to my interview. It went well. Didn't end up taking the job though, not a great fit. I got home 
and wrote up my letter of resignation and emailed it. Told her I would not be returning and would have someone collect my personal items for me. In the email I told her exactly what I thought of what she did. I was in the middle of a lot of projects. This was for an e-commerce company, so I can see a lot of what's being done by checking out the website. I can see a lot of stuff got stalled or restarted completely. It definitely set them back, and the person who I'm pretty sure ratted me out about the interview was running off error and had a lot of late nights at the office, from what I heard. I still am friends with one person who works there and is desperately looking to get foe. She said they now have daily affirmations of the boss choosing that they have to recite 3x daily. On Mondays they receive a sheet of paper with the week's affirmations printed out. I only wish she had tried that chis while I was there. She would have gotten a piece of my mind. They now have daily affirmations of the boss choosing that they have to recite 3x daily sounds like a cult. XX trigger warning. Suicide. When contemplating suicide I have thought it's the only way my family will ever truly appreciate me and love me. When people die is when families mostly regret not caring or being in the person's life as much as they should have. If dying is the only way to feel that warmth I've wanted for so long, then it's worth it. Optimistic nihilism start with, nothing matters. Then, if nothing matters, I get to decide what matters. If the universe has no purpose, I get to dictate what its purpose is. And finally, arrive at if we only get one shot at life, I might as well do what makes me happy, as long as I don't deny others this freedom. Curse just agged, fixed spelling, thanks. You could apply this to many minority groups that become insurgencies. This reminds me of another quote by JFK, those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. Wife joined a therapy office that had existed for 4 years. She worked for 2 years doing basically everything, think payroll and a lot of paperwork that ended up taking over 10 to 15 hours weekly that she didn't get paid for. She had been made equal partner after 1 year, she was never appreciated this whole time. After several final straws she started her own office with 2 others and ran the other a whole out of town in 6 months. 2 years and she now makes more money with half the work. I have a friend from high school who is an accounting and managing people's money. He worked with his father and basically doubled the business. His father made a new hire from another firm and snubbed his son. So my friend started his own company, stole all his father's business and his father retired. His father had to close up shop completely and my friend hired all his good workers and snubbed the new partner. His dad was always a totally rude and cold person. My friend is great, pretty much the funniest person I know, and has a huge heart. When he told me the story, after I had not seen him in 10 years he just laughed and said he's paying the check. I haven't experienced anything, but I saw this especially with this kid I went to school with. I wasn't great friends with him, but we were kinda like school friends I guess. He came into school one day with a red face and he just looked really tired and like he was crying. So being a good person I asked him what's wrong in clap and he said he'd tell me at lunch. When lunch came around he had told me that he had fought with his parents all night about his grades. But keep in mind, he also worked all week and only had some days off because his parents didn't support him financially at all. I told him not to worry about it and that he is more than just his grades. But he kept telling me that to his parents he was probably just a failure. I was honestly really concerned about it because he seemed legitimately depressed and such. Of course I texted him later that night to try and make sure everything was okay. However, a few months ago, I learned he moved out of his house at 18 and told his parents he didn't need their financial support and that he was independent and apparently his parents felt terrible and felt they had failed. That's all I know so far. Thanks for doing what you can to reach out to this guy. It does sound like he has a rough row, no matter what the details are. I think we can find this dynamic in most cases of most criminals. It's mentioned in Criminal Minds that most serial killers have highly unhappy childhoods, and the specific episode this quote was from is a prime example. The unsub of that episode was a nurse with a childlike mentality, who wasn't even aware she was killing women, she was just trying to replace some childhood toys that were taken from her by her father. 
After her mother died, her father used it as an opportunity to rape her and, using his career as a child psychologist, subject her to electroshock therapy to keep her silent. The ECT destroyed her ability to tell the difference between imagination and reality and she grew up to be a very unstable woman. Exclamation mark. A trucking company I used to work for treated me like I wasn't even human. I was working 70 hours a week and making just barely more than I did in 40 hours as a dishwasher. They constantly threatened to fire me for refusing to drive in one dangerous situation or another. They ignored small problems on my truck until the problem left me stuck on the side of the road. Then they blamed me for not reporting the problem. It was common for them to give me 8 hours to go 500 miles in a truck that's limited to 63 miles per hour, then blame me for missing the delivery appointment. I noped out when news broke about this company committing huge amounts of stock fraud, and now the company doesn't exist anymore. I still occasionally see repo companies posting rewards for their trucks and trailers, or fenced and lots full of them, and it feels pretty satisfying. I feel bad for the 3-0-0-0 truckers they abandoned, but not for the office staff who took every chance they could to screw me over. Salad nay. I did this. My parents are not very expressive to me when it comes to their emotions. Thieve never hugged me or kissed me goodnight. I've had to learn to do this by myself since I was about 8. However, they expect the best grades from me and I've never failed to deliver, but only god knows what would happen. About two years ago, my parents got into a big argument. I was taken aback because this was the first time I had seen them fight with each other, or even if they did, at least they were good at keeping it private. Apparently, this argument was really bad and caused my dad to leave home for two months. My mom was in broken and just isolated herself in her room all day. I took care of my younger brother while this was happening. I wanted to shield him because he's really young and vulnerable. While this was happening, I felt like I cared for everybody but nobody did for me. I wanted some attention and I started to starve myself until it I parred out. I would go 10 days in a row without eating, and I do ballet, so it was really harsh on my body. The more I starved and fell sick the more attention I got from my parents. The first time I was hospitalized, that day was the first time in 8 years my dad has kissed me goodnight. Edit, thank you for the hugs, you guys made my day, the way you wrote it at the end. The only story here to nearly make me cry. Colin Kiepernick. He is from the same town I live in. He is the same age as my son. Has been vilified and disowned by a large percent of the city. He is set to film a biopic of his experience growing up here and the racial issues he dealt with. Potentially both a burnt village and embroing portrayal of residents. I live near that town. Has going to flame them. And they deserve it. Me. My twin brother has Asperger's and my mom would give in to him all the time. I had to give up a lot to appease him. I love my brother, but gosh I resent him. My mom had four kids, and when my twin had a fit and said the most horrible stuff I was told I have to understand his my works differently. I had to go to therapy, and through the therapist was the only way I was able to communicate. It's better now, but I still resent him because he made me feel unwanted and that I wasn't as important as him. Now when he is upset at me and my mom talks to me, I can't be understanding. If she tries to tell me I shut it down because I can't deal with that bull anymore. Same with me, even to the point of having a twin with Asperger's. Whenever we get into trouble I'm told it's my fault because I know how to push his buttons. Even when he hits me, I can't do anything back to him. And the one time I did was when he hit me in the balls, so I hit him in the chest. Mom ran into the room and started scolding me, saying that I shouldn't have hit him because I'm bigger than him. Reminds me of another time when he took my phone and wouldn't give it back. So when I tried getting it back a woman started following us to our home and told me to quit messing with him, even though I told her a few times the situation. IDK if in that case it's cause she automatically thought it was a big jock picking on the small and weak nerd type situation, but it was still incredibly annoying. Me. Well, sort of. I worked at a body shop for 9 months. Was never really trained, never given any sort of support by the staff, just wanted to do my job, 
contribute and be helpful, but I had coworkers who were self-interested in impressing our psychopathic, micromanaging manager. One day I was sick of it. I had been pulling 70 hour work weeks for nearly a month, my leg was hiring, my mind was addled, and I was restraining myself from screaming at innocent customers. I was not well. So at 6.30 one night, I was sitting there, and I just left after a few minutes. I drove to a dollar store, bought some envelopes, typed up a resignation letter at home, and put the letter and my shop keys in the drop box. For the last month they had been piling me with the work they didn't want to do to make themselves look good. There were 37 estimates in that pile of unfinished work. They were so booked for appointments that I was certain that each of the other estimators would be working for at least a week on top of their estimates to get them done, meaning either they would have to stay late or the boss would, did not give a duck. Ever watch Avatar? I got this statement from Azala, especially understanding the unspoken element of her story and what made the character the way she was. I think this actually fits for both Zuko and Azala, though more for Zuko. Oze never accepted him as a child and mistreated him for years. Eventually, his father pushed him far enough that he aligned himself with Oze's greatest enemy and Zuko quite literally burnt down his family's legacy in the war. Azula, on the other hand, was looked down upon by her mother as if she was a monster. So she became what her mother saw her as and sought to destroy anything she ever cared about and eventually tried to kill her, but hey. My old workplace had some serious workplace safety issues and serious sour issues. No matter who I notified, be it OSHA or likewise nothing ever happened. So I quit, and being the head of it, I knew that would cause problems. Not only did I quit, but I convinced the customer relations director and a few other higher ups to do the same. Completely toppled the company and they lost $275,000 of their usual annual $290,000. Since then all of the issues have been fixed. What year was this? That annual revenue is barely enough to cover a handful of people, not even including other business costs. One of my high school friends. He was very obviously gay and geeky, but for the most part it was fine at school, because we went to a rich kid charter school, where everyone is expected to be child prodigies and he was. He was in all the advanced math and physics class, and by senior year he probably could have taught most of them. I started noticing things going wrong junior year, when he got called out by one of the teachers for wearing a skirt to spirit day, normal clothes otherwise, and it was just a tulle tutu in the school colors, no big deal. Except we are in one of the most homophobic radical Christian areas in the country. He nearly got suspended, nearly got sent home, and even though it was masked as a punishment for littering on school grounds, administration essentially cancelled that year's Halloween party. I also remember the headmistress, government teacher, and financial lit computer tech teachers all legging a significant part of the student body into using anti-LGBT slurs. The same chiz kept happening our senior year, but when we hung out he seemed fine. He was cool, essentially helped me graduate, because he saved my in-app stats, and was a part of the scholars program at the school. I think he was like third or fourth in our graduating class overall. That summer we met up a couple times for game nights, but we kinda drifted. I have severe depression and that summer hit me like a bag of bricks, so I wasn't around to notice when things went south. I'll regret that for the rest of my life. The night before my first day of college a mutual friend of ours texted me that he was in jail and probably going to prison for the rest of his life. He had originally had a scholarship to Ohio State for engineering, full ride and everything. However for some reason they decided to revoke that last second and leave him with nothing. On top of it his dad was verbally emotionally and physically abusive and said he'd kill any of his kids who came out as LGBT. He decided the best way to pay for collage was to rig his dad's car with a bomb and then apply for government funding with a single mother. The bomb didn't quite kill his dastard dad, but he was in critical condition for a long time. The police had no trouble getting him to confess, and miraculously he only got four years. He should be out any day. E, if you're reading this, I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you when you needed me. I'm sorry I didn't kick our teacher's ease like I wanted to, and I'm sorry I never wrote to you in prison. I feel like I'm probably one of the last people you want to hear from. 
I still love you though. My memories of you are some of my best from high school. And wherever you are I hope you get the second chance you wanted. Also if any of you methodicus who called him FG in high school are reading this, teacher student or otherwise, I hope you rot from the inside out. What school was it? I hate when people use religion to hate. They're the type of people to never see the wrong they do. There's an African tribe called the Masse who acknowledge each other by asking, and how are the children? And the response would be all the children are well. My wife works in a non-profit host goal is to create trauma-informed communities. It's based in Street, Louis and the majority of the work is done in schools. Many schools in the region have come to use the Masse example as a way to explain trauma in our young children. Can we confidently say our children are well? That they are safe and protected and nurtured? How can we view the behavior of children who we know are not well through this lens of trauma? Now that we know they aren't well, does their misbehavior make more sense? Once we do that, how do we heal our children and our communities? It's difficult work. That is a hell of a perspective. I wish it was used more. I fully intend to try to incorporate this idea in the way me and my family view things. Thank you so much for sharing this. A lot of people who were raised by narcissists or suffered child abuse who can't heal afterwards. Abuse from a narc is like an onion. There are so many layers of emotions you go through as you realize all the ways your parents went out of their way to stunt or step on you. And because they are knocks, you'll never get closure from them. Anakin Skywalker. He did feel warmth in the end though. A child not getting affection is behaving bad to get attention at least. I was abused, and to this day the majority of my family doesn't acknowledge it, but I never felt safe or protected so I lashed out a lot. Actually I was just standing up for myself and calling out the bulches in our family but nobody wanted to hear me, so it was lashing out, because I never just shut up I apparently tore the family apart and now my dad lives in another state, but my parents are still together, and our family is a mess. Apparently when you're in a dysfunctional family you're just supposed to sweep it under the rug and take what's coming to you. Equals underscore equals. Never let anything slip in public and never let anyone know about anything. Was what was installed in my head growing up. The opposite of that. What a child can become when they are embraced. Look at the Iwin children. You can tell that when Steve died. Terry was able to really turn that loss into positive energy towards her children. Not to say that Steve dying was a good thing of course, but she is obviously a strong person. IDK if this is the right interpretation, but it is quite literal. I had a friend in elementary school who was neglected by his mom and beat by his dad. One day at school he told me he was going to get revenge and I didn't really think of it. The next morning on the news we saw a report on a child who had caused a gas explosion by pouring gas on his parents while they were sleeping and throwing a match on them. He lost his right leg and had burns all over his lower body and he killed both of his parents. He never went back to public school until the 6th grade when he finally showed up. I asked him where he'd been and he said the hospital and then juvenile detention TLDR. Child gets abused so he blows up his parents. You got an interesting friend there. In high school, I saw this a lot. I met a guy who by all accounts was dirt poor. He said he lived in a trailer and wore the same exact basic outfit every day. You could tell he was a sociopath after 5 minutes in person. He openly preached Nazi philosophy, said women were objects, said the n-word and all. Even admitted he was a psycho and would likely become a serial killer. I'll call him psycho from here on for convenience. The clique he was part of was a group of other male outcasts who mostly all fit the insult stereotype. They all hated each other and started drama constantly. A few years in, Psycho came up with some kind of master plan to start drama that would get two of those guys to completely turn on each other and have a big fight. I only wished him luck because both of his victims had been harrowing me for months or years. Even though he was way depraved than them, Psycho and I had only ever had one fight and ended our beef there. I never would have talked to him if I had more friends though. The only reason I got wrapped up in that group was that one of my only two friends occasionally hung out with them. In a couple of weeks the entire group stopped sitting together and the two that Psycho singled out were screaming at each other in the halls. 
I was grateful because it meant my friend who sometimes sat with them never did again, and I never had to be around them. By the end of high school, every time I saw Psycho's two victims, they were always alone and depressed. But Psycho himself had made new friends, some of them were black dudes who thought his Nazi chis was hilarious. This was different. Well nothing too severe has happened, but Chris Chan. People will just not stop ducking with this poor person, to the point where you almost forget that Chris themselves aren't exactly saints with their behavior, but these online trolls have ducked with him so much. I fear the worst for them. Also their parents were not the best. Don't forget to mention somebody made a 40 minute each, 40 part documentary of Chris Chan. YouTube. I worked at an ice cream shop. I won't name which one, but all I'll say is they may have slightly more than 30 flavors. Anyway, my boss was a conservative Mormon who lashed out at me anytime a piercing or tattoo was showing. The manager and boss would sit in the back and make lists of physically exerting tasks for me to do, while maybe one of them spent an hour frosting a single cake. Legally if you work 6 hours you get a lunch break, but my boss would routinely make me work on lunches. At the time there were maybe 5 employees and we were all overworked and begging our boss to hire new people. I'm a generally easygoing person. I'm usually chipper, hyper, and super happy especially towards customers. It's just my personality that I want to help people and make them smile. I really got along with my coworkers. Constantly cracking jokes with them and dancing. Always got closing duties done early and always made sure every task was crossed off. Over time I noticed my paychecks where and what they were supposed to be. By almost $2 an hour. Minimum wage had gone up and I was a shift lead, so I got a dollar bonus, but I went through my checks and realized the math didn't add up and I had been cheated out of almost three zero 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 dollars from the time I started working until it was brought to my attention. I asked my boss about it and she said because I didn't have the dollar bonus handwritten from her it didn't exist and she asked me to apologize to her for accusing her of cheating me out of money. Two weeks later, I came into work and she handed me my last paycheck and would well say why I was being let go. When the other workers found out I had been fired, three of the four employees quit that day, fourth being the manager that constantly harried me and the younger girls. The others had been there less than four months and weren't very experienced. They were already overworked and stressed. I felt like I brought a certain kind of calmness to the chaos when it got busy. And I think I made working fun for myself and my coworkers because I knew how much it sucked being there and I wanted to make the most of it with them. When they left, they said my boss cried. Immediately after California was put on lockdown and she wasn't able to hire new people because no one was applying. Long story short, she had to close and has been closed since March 26th. I was let go March 24th. I drive past every day on my way home, and they still aren't open. It's unfortunate but I don't feel bad. Edit. Sorry for long speech. Can you do anything about the missing money? Are there any laws to protect you? My dad was a hobby metal detector. He would have to ask permission from each person whose property he looked for civil war relics on. One lady was clearly drugged out of her mind, but said okay. Her son was a thief and a liar, not yet 10 years old. With his mom, lost to what was likely meth, he had no discipline. He told my dad I collect cell phones, and later pickpocketed my dad's phone when his guard was down. My dad, once he realized his phone was missing, put the pieces together and drove back to the house. The kid was sitting on the porch as it rained, and my dad came up to him, asking, why do you have my phone? The kid lied, I was just keeping it out of the rain for you. Dad got it back and vowed never to visit the house again. Poor kid. His behavior cold been malicious, cold been an unconscious cry for help, since he did something so obvious. We'll never know. Minecraft when the villages had gravel and the buildings were 5 to 10 feet apart. I used to burn those down, or destroy some buildings and now I try to redress in the village as little as possible. I don't think you understand what that quote means. Huh. Have not heard the quote before. Very appropriate. I work in education. You just see it, and it's so sad. There was this one r slash pro revenge story I read where Op's mom was raped and gave birth to Opus. 
Op got bullied by everyone, and their grandma Cassie was an unholy child. He grew up to be Solon, that inspected towns or something I don't remember. So he was aged to his hometown and their town was pretty bad, but since Op grew up in this town, they'd get a free pa. Op left a bad review, or something and ruined the whole town financially and as expected, he was very satisfied. IDK if this counts as experience but oh well. Duck beat me to it. I was think about this post too. He ruined the town financially because its whole economy was built on the one factory in town. You either left or worked at the factory and Op just shut the chis down, even when the town tried to suck his cock on his return. Me. At least mentally. I'm still ducked up, but I'm getting better. I was that stereotypical case of a hardworking mother and horrible father. My father, up until he got thrown out of the house, when I was maybe 10 ish, was criminally negligent. He was supposed to babysit me, but he just gamed, slept, or watched porn all ducking day. The only thing he ever did for me was teach me how to heat up food, so he didn't have to do that either. He got thrown out, but the school system still ran me down. I was out of shape and had almost no friends, nearly the entire school hated my guts and tormented me daily to the point that as a third grader I was stuck in the center of a literal circle of kids that made fun of me and would run and poke me and then come back to the outside of the circle. I could get them because of how big I was and small they were. I got in trouble for trying to fight back before my mother came in and went nuclear on the principal. Things sucked like that for a while until my mother got a new boyfriend, and then they got married. The guy was nice for a time, but after a couple years he turned into a monster. Horribly abusive in every way except physical. I think that was when things peaked. I was a mess. I wanted to kill myself and or him. It was nasty as hell, and I'm ashamed of myself, but I still remember that feeling, and how he made me feel. Hell. He still makes me seethe with rage, even though he's been out of my life over a year now. He just pisses me off that much. Due to him, and other factors I even went to the mental hospital for a few days, when I told a doctor with a chill of voice, that a lack of gun access was the only reason, that I was speaking to her at that moment, which was more true than I'd like to admit. I'm no longer a threat to anyone, and I'm nowhere near as much of a threat to myself. But I still remember those days, and I'm still depressed, partly thanks to everything that happened to me throughout my life. You might be thinking where does the burn down the village part come into play? Well that was with my near suicide and murderous thoughts, to purge my ex-stepfather from the world and make him pay for what he did to me. That and the darker thoughts that some kids have when it seems like an entire school system tries to hurt you and beat you down. I was that case that could have turned into a dark day at my school, and I'm not proud of that fact. I don't like how dark my mind was, but I've become stable after a lot of work and a lot of changing my situation. I still have a long ways to go, but I'm no longer a danger to people who hurt me. Thanks for reading, if you made it this far. Might as well have poured all my heart out honestly. Have a fine day night guys, gals, and pals. Me. I never really knew how to bond with people and show affection towards others. I was never close to my parents, siblings or friends, and I simply couldn't find it in me to care about the feeling of other people. A couple weeks ago I broke up with my girlfriend of 2 years because I never talked to her enough and I never showed her enough affection. Even if I wanted to I simply didn't know how. And now she is gone. And I'm back to being alone and once again I have nobody to really care about except for myself. I still miss knowing that someone cares about me though. But I also understand that things would have never worked if I didn't change. Now I'm planning to just cut her and the rest of my current friends out of my life. And start fresh again and maybe see how things work out. And if they don't then I will try to find comfort in being alone. Because the only person I can really understand is myself at it. Thanks for the advice guys I will definitely take the things said into consideration. Maybe try therapy. Donald Trump. I think it's true of a lot of his supporters. Society moved on and left them needing to increasingly hide their racist, homophobic, sexist views because the Overton window shifted. They spend years just getting madder and madder and now they burn everything down just to own the libs. Insoles fit this pretty well. I think in the early stages, affection, 
familial or romantic, has the ability to make them truly empathize, rather than manipulate, but past a certain point they can only see people for what they want from them. Exactly, the positioning that most people take is one of looking down on them, often resorting to insults referring to their celibacy and loneliness. As a consequence, they turn to blame those outside of their group for these same problem. This way, a cycle of me vs them hatred keeps going as they feel progressively more marginalized and helpless and the norm is keep on shunning insults for it. I feel like I'm a pretty good example of this. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I had it pretty rough growing up. My mother, E, lost custody of me when I was 2 years old. She was just generally unfit all around. At that point she'd had my older half-sister, T, taken away a couple years before. The state gave me to my half-sister's paternal grandmother, K, since she'd had my older sister already. Unfortunately for me, this led to years of psychological, emotional, and physical abuse at K's hands. I tried countless times to report, to seek help from adults around me, even in my schools. I wasn't worth the trouble to most of them, but some just feared losing their homes, or having trouble started for them, as K was the property manager in the co-op we lived in. T was of no help, because she was raised as the preferred child, she was the one K wanted to raise. I was just thrown into her lap, because no one else in the family would take me. I was never allowed to do normal kid slash teenager stuff. I was bound to the house, always cleaning, always grounded. I took regular beatings, if even one speck of dust was found, sometimes just for asking a question, or no reason at all. My neighbors called me Cinderella. I know they knew what was going on. I sought help subtly and blatantly depending on how worried I was about the attempt getting back to Kay. He moved into the neighborhood when she gave birth to my youngest sister, making some sad attempt at reconnecting and for the most part succeeding only due to K wanting T and herself to have a relationship with my youngest sister. She always said she made it work, not just for them, but to benefit me as well, though the abuse made it very clear that she didn't care even a smidge about what was good for me. To be clear, never once did K lay a finger on T or our younger sister, and T was always happy to cover Kaza, so long as she was getting the newest things, cell phones, laptops, macube, anything materialistic. To be honest, I blame T for a lot of it. As conceited as it sounds, I think it boils down to her being jealous of me. She was a huge troublemaker, not good at school, talking to middle-aged men online, always doing something she shouldn't, sneaking out, etc. I was the opposite. I had good grades. I was multi-talented. I was a good kid for the most part. T always knew how to encourage K to find fault in me or something I did. K, as a 50-ish year old woman obviously knew right from wrong, so perhaps T wasn't the root cause, but she was absolutely a catalyst. T left home to live with E for a few months, who'd also by now cut ties with K due to unrelated circumstances. T had begun tiring of rules, and in those three months she was gone, K didn't dare lay a hand on me. I finally got to feel in control, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I took full advantage. I got bousy, more intent on not being the victim anymore. If K made an attempt at going back to taking things from me for no reason, or I felt she was going to hit me or anything of the like, I'd make it clear I was all she had left, since T had run off and cut ties for the most part, and I wouldn't hesitate to leave. She might have been a monster at that point, but she was afraid of being left alone. It wouldn't last forever, though and I knew it. K was starting to get more touch and go. A long series of events took place when I was 15, in which K was jailed for 24 hours on an unrelated charge, and I took the opportunity to try to run. T was still living across the street with E. E was still an awful mother, but my younger sister was brought up pretty decent thankfully. She wasn't of much help, but knew what was going on, and did next to nothing. I used two neighbors I trusted, and the boy I was seeing at the time to make my escape, but ended up being found 24 hours later, when K was bailed out, and released and discovered me missing, by the next door neighbor who was meant to be watching me at the time, not someone who helped me, and returned home, despite telling everyone along the way, why I'd run away. K and the neighbor convinced almost all the adults who'd helped, that I'd been lying about it all. 
due to the charge K had been jailed for, and some issues between her and other neighbors, we had to move to a condo a city or two away, with K's mother who needed in-home care as her health was declining. I started working a job, and most of my money was taken from me to help pay the bills. K didn't work, she was on disability. Then, T decided that living with E was not as free range as she'd thought it would be, and wanted to move back in with us. I protested, but was shut down, as T always got what she wanted. T and her then BF moved into the home, taking the basement I was meant to convert to my room, leaving me nowhere to sleep but the couch. Neither of them worked or wanted to. This was going to be the permanent arrangement as I was told. Within two weeks, the abuse returned one final time, all thanks to T, because she wanted my lodge into the computer to rat me out for exploring my sexuality through texting a boy I knew at school. Not great. I know, but I was a teenager, and I wasn't talking to anyone I didn't know, or shouldn't have been. I wouldn't give up the pod. T figured it out. And the rest is pain-filled history. To make an already long story a bit shorter, I'll spare too many of the details from here on out. But after it happened that final time, K asked me if I was going to tell anyone, because it wasn't a can of worms she needed opened right now. I smiled through bitter tears, telling her I loved her and wouldn't tell anyone. But I did. I tried to lie at first, because I had tried to cover the bruising with Macup, but every time someone asked, I asked myself why I was protecting them. Each time, my resolve to lie weakened, and I decided I was never going to be a victim to them again. The next day, when the resolve to protect them finally devolved, I tried to tell anyone who would listen. I told friends at school, I told my boss, when I went to work, I told my best friend's mom, the police, E, the CPS workers, anyone. I knew what I was doing, but I didn't care anymore. I knew that K would be charged. I knew that T and her BF would have nowhere to go, and that they couldn't keep up the bills on their own. I was the only one in the house who worked. I knew that T wouldn't care as well for K's mom, which is probably the only part one feel a little bad about, but she was awful to me as well, when she was in good health. I knew I was blowing everything up, and I was thrilled to watch it all burn. Now, almost 9 years later, I regret nothing. K served jail time for both the unrealtered and child abuse charges. Her mother parred while she was imprisoned. T tried to keep up the house and barely scraped by with the boyfriend. E served prison time as she remained unfit and committed crimes unrelated, but also for a crime related to K's non-child abuse crime. She got out eventually and hasn't changed much. Now, K is a victim to T's entitlement, using and abusing. She and T got a small house in a Ch's neighborhood. T has 5 kids to 2 different fathers, is dating E's boyfriend's son, gross, if I do say so myself, and has been ostracized by the whole of the family. She apparently struggles with addiction, but it's hard to trust anything she says to anyone. I personally think it's a sympathy ploy. She uses K to raise her children, so she can just trick about doing whatever, mostly awful things, including plenty of theft, both petty and grand. And me, I mostly don't speak to any of them, if can help it. I mostly only talk to E when I have to, so I can keep a relationship with my younger sister, since he ended up getting partial custody of her back. Side note, she's mostly competent at raising her, and the other partial custody is my younger sister's dad, so I feel safe about how she's being raised. I graduated high school, secured a pretty decent job. I have amazing friends who have become family. I had a lot of years to try to process my pain. It took a lot of time and trial and error, but I now have it pretty damn good. I have a loving boyfriend, a great roommate, we have our own trailer, two sweet cats and I get to say I built this life on my own and with my boyfriend. I'm sorry this has been such a long comment, but I'd never felt so compelled to answer an R post than I did this one. So I'll sum it up with this, I burned down the village and built my own with the most important piece I could salvage, me. And I've never felt so damn warm in my life. Didn't see this firsthand, but I used to know this guy who was a refugee due to being from a war zone in his home country. He burned down a bunch of tents in his refugee camp after all the trauma he went through and stress he felt from being there. Poor guy was such a troubled kid and is now a troubled man. 
this is probably going to get lost, but I work with emotionally disturbed kids, so see this a lot. Very rarely do kids end up emotionally ducked up without some level of family trauma. To take it quite literally, taught a kid who was a victim of domestic violence. Burned down the house, with the family inside. Luckily they all got out, but dad suffered some pretty horrific burns. Taught a kid who had severe family trauma, but was replaced with mum eventually, after mum had got clean, and started a new family. One time, in the middle of the night, he went downstairs, poured olive oil all over the tiles, at the base of the stairs, then started yelling help. Mum came running down the stairs, slipped in the oil, and broke her arm. Lucky it wasn't a neck. After several more pretty horrific acts of violence, he had to be moved out of the home. Honestly have dozens of these stories, of kids who have lashed out on their abusive families. A distant relative of mine took this a bit too literally in a sense. Her mother was a perfectionist and a father cold and take it. She would insist on letting the babies cry it out, and was overall incredibly set in her ways. He left but wanted to stay in the children's lives. However the mother used this as an opportunity, to get as much money and hurt him as much as possible. Obtaining any kind of custody became too much, so the father left. This all happened, while his children were fairly young. The son was known as a troubled kid and crazy. The mother hated him for it, so she sent him to a military school. This would later save his life. Once he was out of the picture, the daughter became the center of all of her mother's tendencies. She was quiet, but never lived up to her expectations. Without a solid support system, she began to act out as well. It culminated with her setting the house on fire and being sent to juvie for the rest of her high school days. She graduated there and her mother didn't even bother to show up. No one wanted me, so I burned all bridges and joined the army at 17. I no longer crave affection from those who don't care for me, but most importantly I made my own family full of love and warmth. I'm married and my dad hates it and has never spoken to my husband. My dad disapproves of my cats. The village was cold, so I left it and made my own village radiating with warmth and love. How can anybody disapprove of a cat? Sorry you had to go through that. I was an inquisitive child sent to Catholic schools, but lived with a parent that wasn't religious. I asked honest questions and was treated as a disturbance. I wasn't acting out, I was willing to be the biggest apologist ever, but instead I've decided that my life's work will be obliterating the foundations of Abrahamic religion. To me it makes me think about how I was the black sheep in my family even as a kid, and how I was resented for certain reasons that happened before I was alive, mostly because of who my father is, so finally I said duck it, burnt my bridges, and cut my family out of my life. 4chan. The anonymous hacker known as 4chan. Not so much not embraced, but rather held so tightly he could never break free. I grew up with a guy, was never allowed to do anything by himself growing up. His parents forced him to practice his instrument for 2 hours a day. They were teachers at the school he attended. So of course they were at every school event with him, and insisted he attend with them. They even expected him to eat lunch in one of their clarooms every day. He was so ready to get out of that environment, that by the time he was 18 he threw away a full ride college scholarship to work at a fast food restaurant. He ended up getting into drugs, married someone who was also in the drugs, and they had four kids that they did not take care of. His parents ended up getting custody of the kids by the time the oldest was around 8 and the youngest was a baby. Unfortunately they really didn't change their parenting methods. The older three are doing okay, haven't had the easiest life, and have not made the best choices, but they are independent and raising their families. The youngest is a complete nightmare and has been in all sorts of legal trouble. Their father did eventually get off drugs, got a good job, house, and wife. His kids treat him more like an older sibling than a parent. Meaning slash explanation, the popular African proverb goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Needless to say, it is very true, but the opposite is also true. It takes a village to bring down a child. That is, it takes many contributing factors to cause a child's destruction. Incidents about teen shootings at schools or burning down a school are not caused by a single act. Bullying, 
harriment, heckling, intimidation, abuse, peer pressure, name calling, character alienation are just to name a few catalysts of such reaction. But the irony is that all the aforementioned are symptoms themselves. At the root lies what is called self-concept or self-image depending on how one looks at it. It's basically everything about the answer to the question, who am I? It's a cliche, but it's profoundly true. Hurt people hurt people. It's an endless cycle. Gestures broadly to USA. My mother and stepfather pretty much ignored me and focused on my little brother. I'd ended up doing chis deliberately so they'd have to pay attention to me, from shoplifting to just taking things around the house from money to just food. Eventually I walked out and haven't spoken to them in years, as years of being ignored, to them making excuses so they didn't have to see my school plays to going to my parents evenings, but dropping everything for my younger brothers just got to be too much. Sasuke from Naruto. I'm kind of surprised the best ranked responses so far don't mentioned on all Trump. The man was a failure to his father. He was a joke in the 80s always trying to be something he wasn't, a success. Tried so hard to get on Letterman and the like, only to be laughed at regularly. Has had from what I can tell nearly single every enterprise he has ever started, go bankrupt and fail. Owes millions if not billions to multiple financial institutes and Mayfair states. Became a WWE Hall of Famer somehow, but not even respected by Rastlin folk. Got himself a chisty reality TV show that never really raised his appeal. Dude has been a con man and so seetle joke for decades yet somehow gets elected by racists and idiots to ruin their country, and they cheer him on as he does so. If America is not burning right now, so he can feel its warmth I don't know of a better example. I mean Christ the world at this point feels the warmth that the dumpster fire in the US has caused. Edit to fix some type of I noticed. Following my parents divorce, while my mom found a new place to stay we roomed with another family. The parents were strict to a T, step out of line suffer the consequences, and there were no exceptions for anything, follow the rules, or receive a holy belt. The parents were also incredibly lazy and spent most of the day on the couch watching the same 4 TV shows. These two combined meant the kids never got attention but really wanted it so a lot of them took a lot of chis. Examples of reasons for punishment include screamed at for eating a slice of pizza in a bedroom, three or four were belted for seemingly drinking most of a soda bottle, they didn't, being screamed at for not taking a shower. Being screamed at for not eating at the mandated eating schedule that was a weird one they had an eating schedule which, if you missed a meal you had to wait until the next one, again no exceptions, and finally being little minutes late to dinner and getting yelled at. I'm not sure where they ended up because military family, but I hope those kids get a better life and are better parents than those awful ones. Okay where's the part where you answer the second part of the question. Neglectful childhood and abusive parent. I'm putting that woman in a home as soon as she's old enough and torching her house after I get a burn permit. Over 10 year plan in the making. The bitterness is real. Teacher at the school I grew up at. The type of teacher that loves to toss worksheets at kids. Ended up in charge of the shop program. She ended up getting the funds for a CNC plasma table plus a training on its function, maintenance, operation programs, etc. She didn't attend the training, but instead had one of her students that was fairly bright do it all with the option he would just disseminate the information to the other kids because he was so paranoid about the project. A couple months in, and, being the gossip slash small town rumor mill type person, she starts bad mouthing and spreading rumors about the kid. As they got to know each other better, they apparently gained a distance for one another. Because this is a charter school and the kid had transferred from a public school, he just told his parents he'd rather be back in public high school again. He quickly exited with all of his knowledge and perhaps one or two cables. Last I heard, she wasn't a teacher anymore and the plasma table had to get sold off. When I moved to Georgia from Washington State at 11, I'm a military kid and we'd done it before several times but this was different. 
were black and it's the south and I don't want to play into the stereotype of southern racism, but I was never treated the same from the get go especially in school. Nonetheless when school started it was a tough adjustment, school in Washington ends in June, while Georgia ends in May and Washington starts again in September, while Georgia starts in August. So I got less than a month of summer at 11 which wasn't the biggest deal, it's just crappy. But when school started I was warned by teachers to not know material, or to not pay attention ECT. In addition I found out that due to differences, in testing my score on gifted testing wasn't quote good enough to get into gifted cleese in Georgia. This is ignoring the lower quality of education, but I'm not here for semantics. So I had to take the test again, and when the results came in I parred with flying colors, with one exception. My teacher who hadn't enjoyed me in the open weeks of the school year, I was a fairly restless kid and material bored me, told me I did not have the quote motivation to get into gifted. I seeing the testing results was surprised, shocked, and angry as I had an A in that teacher's class. What lack of motivation did she see? Later I had a long conversation with my mom a conversation she would come to regret telling me that my behavior in class and my grades were to blame regardless of how good they were, that they weren't there at the moment. After that talk I swore from then on that no nothing would be denied to me due to motivation, nothing ever again especially not due to grades. And what's fueled my pursuits academically has been anger at the system that to this day screwed me over by putting me behind in mathematics and science please. This wasn't the last time I had to prove myself to teachers. In the south they expect black kids to be stupid, to not want to do work, to fail, to not pay attention, to not be at reading, or math or history standards. I have vivid memories of my 5th grade teacher the next year forcing me to read textbook chapters over and over again, because there was no way I could read and retain the information faster than most of the clap. I later learned that there is racial bias at play, bias I still contend with in Cleese at the beginning of the year, if I don't add myself as a hard worker or someone who learns quickly and knows heaping sums of information. But that promise to myself, I've been keeping, and it's what's fueled me, learning even during summer, to keep up with my clamets, long nights of studying after practice, and what eventually got me top of the clam and even highest averages in mathematics and other clee some years. I'm still angry at how much a shot in the legs not getting into that program was for me, but I don't know if I'd be the student I'm now, if I had never had those experiences. But it's part of the reason, even after I finish high school I will never say I'm from Georgia, I'm from the south, or anything favorable for Auburn University, that's the teacher's college, or anything favorable towards Georgian education. And I will never forgive my 4th grade teacher who opened my eyes with blatant disregard for my future. Bro, reading this I feel you. Nothing worse than knowing you're doing things the right way, and not even your parents will hear you. I've been through some weird shiz in the military but that childhood quiet desperate on just sticks. Wit. I end up crying after I finish this story, but here it goes. I worked as a nanny for triplet boys since 18 mo's old and a little girl since birth for more than four years. Minimum wage but free rent and food so it's fine with me. Four years and no salary increase. They were separating in the last few months of my stay and I did not bother to ask for a raise because I do not want to add to their problem. I had to take care and discipline the four kids, cook this and their parents food and clean the house. Paid 10 Canadian dollars for my overtime. During the last four months of my stay I have also been cleaning two houses since the parents separated. No extra pay given, and again I'm too nice and stupid to ask, since separating is expensive. I agreed to stay until summer, since the kids needed me, while they're still adjusting to their new situation, or so I thought. I work part time as a house cleaner. When covered hit, my employer is not very happy of me working outside. I took precautions, and do social distancing while cleaning houses, wears a mask and gloves the whole time. Also, when I clean, the owners of the house leave me alone so there's really no close contact. We also have very few cases here in Atoa. The father got so paranoid of the cover he sent me the message he sent to his ex-wife. In his message he said hey K, I'm not really comfortable of Jay going out cleaning other people's house with covered going on. As I've told you I don't need her and is only keeping her because of you. Thoughts. I was filled with anger. 
4 years I gave for their kids which I loved so much I was willing to turn back a job offer to me, just so I can stay with them, while they were adjusting due to the separation. 4 years of hard work, only to be told I'm not needed, as if I'm the one who begged them to stay on this job. I thought I was a part of their family. I treated the kids like my own children. They are my children. I told the father it's fine, if they fired me, I don't care. I have a job waiting for me, that I kept turning down because of them. Never mix love with your job guys, you'll only get hurt in the end. Maybe it was a scare tactic to make me stop working outside but it surely backfired on him. He said sorry, he was not thinking properly. That they love me, and was so sorry he said those things, and has hurt me. That they still needed me. But no, I told him. You said it yourself, you don't need me. You can't leave, we have a contract. Contract's done, it was only a verbal agreement that it'll stay till summer I said. Still that's valid, you have to finish it. Yeah, but I can also resign, and give you two weeks notice according to the law. I resigned and left the house two weeks after. I was able to see the kids two and half months after I left. It was hard to explain to them why I'm not living with them anymore. They still seem to not understand it since I've been with them since they were very young and still does not understand that I'm just their nanny. I'm Jay who takes care of them, plays with them, and cooks delicious food for them. It's hard because I really did love them so much, but I also have to accept that they were not my children. I and them are master in good terms. I have not talked to the father for a long time. He's around 60 and the kids are 6 and 4 years old. Thanks for reading. When my supervisor at my old job started gaslighting me and none of my coworkers believed it, I started pushing and hitting people that snitched on me and I used an air gun to blow a bunch of holes in the wall. I went to a severely fundamentalist Christian academy in middle school. It was 5 years of constant isolation, oppression, emotional and mental abuse. I finally decided I was fed up with it all. I was 14 and failing every subject except English because I didn't give a chis anymore about their brainwashing curriculum. I refused to go back and mom acquiesced, promising to put me in public school next year, hereby withdrawing the exorbitant tuition that the school was allegedly in dire need of. Yeah, a new church steeple and new trees and pavements are so needed. The following year, funding fell through for the new year, and they had to close. Good. Duck M. I still have nightmares, and I'm 27 now. I wasn't the main cause for their financial ruin, but I like to think my rebellion indirectly ducked them over. Impoverished minorities, BLM riots. The Catholic Church. The church used to be very important to me. Even considered joking the priesthood for a short while. Until I learned more about how they feel about me as a gay man. I may not have burned it down, but I do continue to resent it for abandoning me despite how much I used to love it and serve it. Not proud. 18 and in senior year of HS. Girlfriend at the time. Told PPL she planned to keep me around after graduation as the BF back home. While she had fun at her out of state college. This was all verified. I systematically had relations with her four best friends in secret. Then broke up with her right after graduation, sharing my knowledge of her intentions, denied nothing, and how I laid with all her best friends. I took the whole fleet down in a calculated 3 month chess game. Their betrayals to each other imploded their friendship in an instant. Oh my. You watched until the end? That's ducking awesome dude. Thanks for watching.